In this video, we're going to complete example two. A company would like to know what number of employees will bring the optimal profits. The table below compares the number of employees working to the weekly profits. When we look at our table, we've got the number of employees on the top row, and we've got our company weekly profit profits on the bottom row, and you'll see that that's in thousands of dollars, meaning that 90 means $90,000, 15 means $15,000. We can see that if they have zero employees, they make a profit of zero dollars, which makes sense. You need workers to make money. We'll start with question A. It says construct a scatter plot from the above data. We work along one column at a time. So looking at the first column, we've got the point zero, zero, which when we mark, it's right down here at the origin. Looking at the next column, when we have 10 employees, we have a profit of $90,000. That will go right about here. Moving to the next column, when we have four employees, we get a profit of $48,000, which would be roughly here. I'm going to pause and fill in the rest of the scatter plot. Once we fill in our scatter plot, you'll notice we have a parabolic shape which I'm going to put here. Let's move on to our other questions. Alright, question B says describe the strength of the association. So if we look at this you'll notice that the points are quite close to our curve here. There's only a few that veer off here. I'm going to say that it's a strong association. Just remember that a strong association is the same as saying a strong relationship. Now moving on to question C. Describe the form of the association. Is it linear or nonlinear? It's obviously nonlinear because it's not a straight line. And then it says describe the direction of the association. Is it positive or negative? Well, it's actually both. It starts off positive and eventually becomes negative. So we're just going to write that it's not applicable because when describing the direction, you have to pick either positive or negative, and we, we can't do that in this particular situation. Now looking at question E, what is the independent variable? And we mentioned earlier that whatever is on the horizontal axis is the independent variable. So the independent variable is the number of employees. And it wants us to predict the weekly profits gained when the company has 12 employees. So if we look where the 12 is, and we need to go up to our parabolic curve, not the point, but to the parabolic curve, and then go across. And we can now predict the company profits if they had 12 employees. And it's somewhere around, let's say, 77 thousand dollars. Now looking at question G, what is the dependent variable? The dependent variable is always the variable on the vertical axis, which is our company weekly profit. Finally, question H wants us to predict the number of employees when the company makes a weekly profit of seventy thousand dollars. This time we're kind of doing the prediction in reverse at the seventy thousand dollars. And you'll notice we actually are going to have two solutions when we do this. We're going to have a solution down here at about six employees and down here at about 13 employees. So we can just write both down, six or 13 employees. Anyway, that concludes our video on example two. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.